Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gaming Droid and welcome back to Free Trial Droid. This is the digital version of Smash Up, uh, which is free to play for the basic decks. Smash Up is a physical card game um, and the digital version was created and published by Nomad Games. Um, basically it works on the idea of having themed decks and those themed decks are then combined. You combine two themed decks to make your playing deck and those two themed decks work together or sometimes not together depending on which ones you choose to make a deck which you use to fight over victory locations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a local game and I will show you the basic mechanics uh, and then I'll talk a little bit as I go through about the mechanics and the monetization and um, sort of the video game version of this. So let's jump into Play Local. Uh, before we jump into Play Local, one thing I would have to say, like, you can see a distinct lack of options here. Uh, the options are hidden in my game, as is the tutorial. So the options of the tutorial and the uh, stats and shops are hidden under my game. So if I go to Play Local, and I'm going to just play against one opponent, we're going to have a medium difficulty AI. So this is where the DLC comes in. Um, and the cost comes in. When you play the game you have three decks to choose from. You have the dinosaurs which are to do with force and direct power. They um, have quite high power cards and they are to do with upgrading and destroying minions. Uh, the geeks, they are all to do with manipulating the rules and the ninjas are all to do with uh, weakening your opponents while bringing on reasonably forceful um, uh, characters of your own. Uh, however, with the DLC you get pirates, aliens, Cthulhu, all sorts of things. And it's the same with the physical game. The base game contains several decks and then the um, additional expansion packs you buy contain additional decks. It's not a collectible card game in the fact idea of you getting decks and booster packs and packs of six cards that you add into things. The uh, decks for the dinosaurs, the geeks, the ninjas, the aliens, etc. are all pre-made and kind of pre-built and you just combine two of them together. So what you do is you take it in turns to pick a uh, deck. So I'm going to pick dinosaurs because I want some reasonably heavy hitters. So there's my first deck and Alfred is going to pick some geeks. So he's going to do some rule manipulation. Personally I think I'm probably uh, Alfred's picked dinosaurs. So he's going to do rule manipulation and power. Personally I think I'm going to go with power and I'm going to go with weakening my opponent. So the way the digital game works and the way the real game works is you have victory locations. And the victory locations have these numbers. So the person with the most attack points on a location gets the first number, second number, third number. Now the first number is not always the highest. So in some cases you might want to be second place because you might have more uh, points if you get into second place. The victory locations also have special abilities. So this one you gain an additional victory point for each minion you have. Um, this one. Uh, each time a minion is destroyed here, placed at the bottom of the owner's deck. So rather than destroying them into the graveyard, they're destroyed into a um, back into the deck. And after each minion is played here, the owner may play an additional minion of power two or less. And over on the right-hand side, you see the breaking point of each of these victory locations. Once the total number of uh, total minion power reaches that, the basically the base location or the victory locations fight occurs and first place, third, second place and third place are determined. So the idea is to get to 15 victory points. You'd think you'd want to rush for these ones and for the high points. Sometimes you want to be first, sometimes you want to be second depending on where the victory points are. And sometimes, like for instance, uh, one of the aliens tricks is they have a minion that gives you a victory point every time you play it and they then have cards that let you put minions back into people's hands. So one thing you can do is you can actually mill yourself you can actually put out a minion that gains you a victory point, bring it back into your hand, put it out again, bring it back into your hand, put it out again. Um, but it takes one turn each time, so you'd only be getting one victory point a turn. But that means if you did that and you ha you drew the right cards, you'd be able to win in a mere 15 turns, not accounting for taking any victory locations. So this is a War Raptor. He gains plus one power for every War Raptor on the base. And these are the bases, these lines. Um, so he got to three just by putting him out. This is a ninja on your turn. If you have not yet paid a minion, you may return this minion to your hand and play an extra minion on this base. Play on a base, destroy an action that has been played here. Before a base scores, play a minion. 
player minion, ongoing the minion has plus two power. So that's an upgrade card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw out my um, Raptor onto Homeworld, and this will give me the ability to throw out a second minion straight away. Yeah. So I'm ramping up my power onto um, this. I'm going to throw an upgrade card onto my Raptor. That will bring him up to five power in total, and I'm going to draw two cards because it's the end of my turn. And at the bottom here it tells you what's happened. So he's played Game Guru. Game Guru is not affected by other abilities. That's fair enough. And he's also played an action card. Choose one of your minions on a base. Destroy a minion there with less power. So he's going to destroy my ninja because he has more power than my ninja. He can't destroy my war raptor because it does take into account all of the power boosts that I've given things. And he's going to play a war raptor. So both of our war raptors are going to gain bonus points from that. So he's in the lead there slightly. So let's see if we can't take that back. So with this one, Shinobi, before a base scores you may play this minion there. Uh, you can only use the Shinobi's ability per base. Okay. So we're going to whack down another War Raptor. This will give me a bonus point for having a War Raptor and also I'll take a bonus point from having his War Raptor. So that's going to rocket me on ahead. I could also play an action. But I don't particularly want to. So at the moment we're fighting over this one base. So he's just going to play a general geek, um, a fan. She can be milled out of your deck to try and draw additional cards. And he's going to play each of your minions game plus one until the end of turn. So he's tried to bump this over to the point where he would win. Uh, but he's failed. Uh, so it's my turn. So I'm going to throw out, oh, um, it's actually only my turn because um, he did succeed in actually getting over the amount of power required, but because I have shinobis, I can actually sneak in there and take over. So now the base scores, and because I'm in first place I'm going to get four victory points, he's going to get two. So the shinobi, the sneaky shinobi, managed to pinch me that victory point location. So you can see how the game works, and the time it gets complicated is when you're playing against real players, you can actually start attacking multiple victory bases at the same time, multiple base locations at the same time, and you can actually start having ones that cross between each other. So these are all going to jump into our graveyard, one after another, shows you what the graveyard is. The digital version of the game has a nice little events log, which shows you what's going on, and just a little zoom in feature. Um, so the Great Opal. After this base scores, all players other than the winner may move a minion from here to another base. So in this case, um, basically the losers get to rescue one of their minions and move them to another base location. So actually, like at the moment, I don't really want to play anything. So I'm actually going to just wait and I'm going to take a couple of uh, minions. And he's waited as well. So in that case, as he's going to be waiting as well, I'm going to be throwing out something on the tar pits. Just to uh, give myself a little bit of a bonus. And play on a minion, ongoing, destroy this minion at the end of the turn. Okay, so that's a timed destruction. Move all minions to this base. So he's going to drag my um, Triceratops out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, assassinate Felicia Day. And he broke Felicia Day with force of will, Will Wheaton specifically. So he's discarded my action card for me, which was very nasty of him. But that's okay, I'm going to play another minion out onto this, the tar pits. So you can see how the game rolls and how the game plays on. Uh, the games can last for quite a long time. I'd love to see just a, a like a uh, um, an option to roll through the entire of the opponent's turn rather than moving through one of the opponent's actions at a time, because I think I'm reasonably quick of thought, fast enough to keep up with what's going on. So I could protect my minions from actions. I could reduce the breaking point. Destroy an action that's been played here. Play on a minion, destroy any number of actions on it. Ongoing, the minion has minus four power. Destroy a minion with three power or less. Oh, of power three or less. So that should allow me to destroy him. 
See, this is one of the things that does frustrate me, of power three or less. That suggests three or less power. Um, but the wording of the card is actually kind of being misinterpreted in a way, in that it's not allowing to me... Oh, it has plus two power, what's on my turn? That's why I can't attack it. Actually, so completely ignore me, I'm just reading cards wrong. And embarrassing myself in videos. That's fine. So I'm going to whack out this. And that's going to... What are you? Choose a minion, you control that minion until the end of turn. Did you just stop me from destroying a minion? I despise you. So actually, you can see that the AI is actually reasonably intelligent with its play of cards. It's a really interesting, well-formed game with some great little tactical choices going on. So he's going to gain an extra VP because he's played a card that gives him an extra VP when he wins some. So the Tart Pit has scored and we're getting all our cards discarded for us. And the home world comes back. So I get a couple of minions. He's going to play War Raptor out there. Um, And because he's played a War Raptor, he's going to play another War Raptor out onto the home world. So I'm probably going to um, go for kind of like boosting up this, uh, reduce the breaking point. Destroy a number of actions. Eh, no. So I'm going to grab Way of Deception, move one minion from your base, your minions to another base, and I'm also going to grab a Ninja Acolyte. He's going to play the Guru. So he's basically powering himself through this this particular group here. So let's see. On your turn, if you've not yet played a minion, you may return this minion to your hand and play an extra minion on this base. So I am going to throw him out. And then I'm going to throw a reserve on this to protect my minions from being messed with. So I can choose an action card. So I can destroy a minion with less power than mine. So I could destroy one of his minions up here, which might be a good option to do. However, I could also use this to destroy the lowest powered minion on that base. So I'm going to destroy her. And then I'm going to play a War Raptor up onto this base. Because what I'm doing is I'm trying to stack up as many creatures on this base as possible because the number of victory points I get is determined by the number of creatures I have. And I'm trying to deny him creatures on this base. Meanwhile, he's trying to rush down the home world. So he's played a King T-Rex up there. And that's resulting in that scoring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a card that allows me to play another card before it scores. And I'm going to grab myself one extra victory point. I'm up to 12 victory points now, so I only need 3 more victory points to win the game. He needs another 6 victory points to win the game. So now I'm probably going to try and rush down the Grey Pearl, try and get my high score or try and get my victory on the Grey Pearl, and if I can rush down the Grey Pearl I can win the game. The Grey Pearl has a total of 17. I don't have any minions to move. Uh, plan to destroy an action that's been played. What's that action? That empowers him. So I will destroy... Oh, is it destroy that's been played on the base? Okay, right, fair enough. Okay, again, this is me not understanding the cards fully. So I've got a good one there, plus four power until the end of my turn. So that's a very good card 
to have. Look at the top. So he's going to basically mulligan his hand out. Again, it would be nice if this could be sped up slightly with the uh, local play. It would also be nice if it could be sped up with the online play as well. But with the online play, it would actually probably go a bit faster because people are going to be moving through things a little bit quicker. So he's really going all out. He's actually managed to finish off the home world already. But that's fine because he still needs more points. So now basically, because it's going to probably be the cheapest, we're probably going to be properly fighting together over getting the Grey Opal. Now I don't have any minions at the moment, which puts me at a disadvantage. The other option I had would be get three minions on here and have it complete. So I literally have nothing I can do, so I'm going to wait for some minions. You may destroy a minion of power three or less. This minion has plus two power on the opponent's turn. So that's going to give me the option of uh, basically ramping up my power. So he's going to be going for that one. So I'm going to basically have to outpace him with that. So that's 17. Each of your minions gains one power until the end of your turn. See, because these both end on the turn, there's no point playing them. Choose one of your minions on a base and destroy something. Play on a minion ongoing if this ability will affect this minion, destroy this card. Reduce the breaking point of a... So I'm going to play this because it's going to be allow me to reduce the break point of this by 4, down to 13, which means that with a little bit of luck, and I can't play two action cards unfortunately, but... Uh, Hmm. Play on one of your minions on going, this minion is not affected. Okay, so I'm going to protect her from actions, and that's going to leave me. So I have a Shinobi and a T-Rex. Good. So as long as he doesn't manage to... Um, no, don't discard that one. Discard that one. As long as he doesn't manage to basically take over the tar pits in one turn, I should be able to... Um, he's discarding cards. I should be able to take the tar pits this turn. So with that I get up to 14. I'm then going to give one of my characters a plus 4. And that lets me score on that, which is going to give me 3 points. And that's going to give me the game. So that's the basic of how the game works. As you can see the digital version works really well. You start with 3 different kinds of deck. There's local play and multiplayer. Um, I'll show you the multiplayer sort of login area. It's odd that it goes through bringing out another one, but there you go. And you can play with up to uh, four players. So locally you can have up to four, uh, three AI going at once. But over on the multiplayer, you can see we have either I am ready or leave lobby and that readies you up into the lobby. Um, and it's just kind of like an automatic linking thing. It's really well done. Uh, the starter pack is uh, six additional factions and the six additional factions cost you seven pounds which uh, is roughly ten dollars which isn't bad at all. It's a well put together, well drawn, well animated um, tactical decisions card game. Um, with a quite fun style. The one thing I would say is that you're probably going to um, probably going to want to sort of invest in the starter pack if you're going to be going for multiplayer. Um, and you're also probably going to some people might get a little bit frustrated by the fact that you have to click th through each of the sort of tickers of each person's turn. Um, it's the kind of thing that new players will be benefit from, but experienced players will find annoying to have to go right yes I want to proceed yes I know what he's done yes so this is uh, Nomad I believe and this is Smash Up which is a um, digital edition of a collect of a real life card game that's bought in packs or deck boxes um, and it's free to play with uh, the sort of monetization being buying additional factions thanks for watching and I will see you again next time